This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show sure did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, y'all. Hey, and welcome. We are here. It's Thirsty Thursday. This is Bloody Happy Hour. I've been practicing. You sound a little bit more normal. I am so much more normal right now. I'm refreshed. I'm rejuvenated. I'm (laughs) rejointed. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Um, And Caroline is drinking today. I am. And I've been, I am working out again. So I think I have lots of energies. Multiple. Not just one energy. Energies. So can you tell me about your workout that you started? Mm, well, I decided to die for my workouts. I was like, I think I'll just be in pain okay. the whole time. Okay. Because I really kind of stopped working out um, yeah, after I started do. leading my workouts. <laughs> I was like, yes. and I don't want to work out by myself. So I was like, uh, I need somebody else to push me. So I found some other trainers and yes. I had some other campers, former campers come with me and no, I can't really like walk, but I love it because you know when you just love that Somebody else feeling is telling you of what to do. being like so in so much pain, and you love it. Like, is that a masochist? Masochistic? Maybe Massachusetts? Massachusetts? Yeah, I'm a Massachusetts. Massachusetts? What's that? Well, I am the same. <laughs> when you become a trainer and you're telling people to work out all the time, and you're writing up workouts all the time. It becomes work, and you don't want to do it anymore. Don't, I won't think about so it. So when I stopped running my boot camps, I didn't want to work out with anybody, but I also didn't want to work out, I mean, write my own workouts anymore. So I tried boxing. Oh, it that was would be fun. so much fun, and I let a lot of I've never done aggression that. out <gasps> on the box. Like, do you have anger he issues? Typed, I'm, I don't anymore. Oh. Like, it's true. It's like a fighting gym. So he's like... If you're on the ground, like it was, it was legit. And then there's no air conditioning and it feels like a sauna. Yeah, this was like you sweat. Mm -hmm. So it was really juicy. I did not just, that was my chair. (laughs) That was chair. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. Anyway, so I'm so, yeah. So we're, what were we saying about before that? Boxing. Bloody happy hour? And Blood how I can't walk. Oh, yeah, that's probably. Hey, so um, new, 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 new Bloody Happy Hour is officially going to have a Patreon. And we're going to call it Raw, Real, and, and Ratchet. Raw, Listen. Real, real yeah. what? Listen, first you of all. You got to be able to say it. Can't, I don't know if we should do it with so many Wait, R's. I don't know the order I yet. Real, no Raw, bias. and Ratchet. Real, real raw, raw and ratchet. Real raw and ratchet. But basically, it is our uncut, unedited versions of the episodes that we've aired so far. So, you guys know sometimes we get to drinking. <laughs> and At so, least I tried to, knows, because they left a review saying how we was tipsy. 
<laughs> so, so you're going to go into this if you want to be a Patreon. You're going to go into this knowing that it is like all our extra conversation, all and it's a little explicit. So, but it's fun, all with fun. So. We'll tell you more information when yeah, we get so more. just get prepared. Yeah, get prepared. And then we're I just got off phone with a guy to talk about some merch. Yes. So um, we're wanting to come up with like all we'll kinds of do some of pre order. Yeah. Do like a pre order and we'll see how it goes. So some new things that are coming up. I'm excited to tell y'all. Um anything else? How about How the- about that? Do we say what we are? Bloody happy hour? Oh, they know it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um did you see that the Uber driver, can you turn your alarm off? <laughs> Uber driver, but he wasn't an Uber driver, killer guy. So I get convicted. alerts because I have Court TV on uh, Twitter and I have them send me alerts every time they make some kind of announcement. And uh-huh. so I'm constantly getting these notifications from Court TV. So I see all these things, and sometimes I don't read them. But whenever you mentioned it the other day, I was like, oh, my gosh, I remember seeing something about the, like, Uber, whatever, driver, murders. Or, but I didn't I didn't look into it. So tell me about it. So you said all that to say you don't I know. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I wanted to make sure everybody knew everything that went through my head just right now. She took the long route. But yeah. listen, here's what it is, is he's not an Uber driver. So... We don't want to give Uber a bad name because Uber is pretty safe. Yeah, but I was an Uber Eats driver. Yeah, I I Uber drivered was an Uber driver oh, yeah, at you, one point. You, you Uber drove drove to me <laughs> from Cheryl's house. You Uber? No, you weren't even in. Yes, there. I was in the car with Carmen and Mel. Yes, I wasn't. No, I'm pretty sure. Well, at least I was there at the party. Yes, you. Okay, were maybe they told me about it. This is all getting edited out, so <laughs> I don't see why. It so, should okay. stay in. Listen, okay, mistaken Uber case. So this girl called an Uber and the Uber was a black car. But I think she was a little tipsy, not victim blaming at all, just the oh. facts. Oh. And she walked to the wrong oh, this is, black yes. car. And I where did I see this? She was a college student. Yes. Samantha okay, was is, her name. This was different than what I was thinking of. So she got in the wrong car and then she was stabbed 120 times. Uh, oh. Overkill. How? Okay. I think I heard that he was circling. Like somebody, there was a witness or something that said that he was like circling the area multiple times. Like, literally just, like, waiting for waiting, somebody to maybe? be like, oh, I'm here to come. Like, I don't know. Car. He had to have been that, doing this yeah. on purpose. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. And so, anyways, he was convicted for murder, and I haven't seen, like, what, because they haven't done the sentencing phase. Because that just happened. <laughs> um, maybe it did, and maybe it I mean, it was more recent than not, but I can't remember, and the article isn't showing it. But so stabbed 120. Oh, it was in March of 2019. So, yeah, pretty recent. His girlfriend ended up turning him in, basically, because she saw him cleaning his car. Was this in South Carolina? Yeah. Um, his car, he cleaned out his car with bleach. She saw, she knew that he had a knife, saw him cleaning a knife and saw some blood in the back of his vehicle. And, um, she just put it all together. So his girlfriend, good job, girlfriend, like right turned him in. Go. Right yeah. Up, asshole. So that came up today, but so did, did, do you have it up? The dating game killer? Oh, 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 and oh. No, but was I'm actually um, okay. So tell them the backstory. So we haven't covered this story, and I don't know a lot about it. But his name was Rodney Alcala, and Rodney he was Alcala. on death row, and he ended up dying before he can get executed. So may well, I think we're gonna do like a, a rig, um, like a OG serial killers month yes. one day yes. one month. And um, so some of these OG serial killers that um, like the originals, 
uh, we'll do a month of them just because they're everybody's favorite. But it's going to be later because I feel like everybody knows about them. I love talking about ones that people don't know about. So maybe this fall, maybe in October for Halloween <gasps> month. Oh, for sure. So he like, uh, he died in, he just died in prison. He just died of natural causes. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, I just kind of wish these people would, like, suffer in some way. Yeah. After all the stuff they did. Well, hopefully he didn't repent, and so he'll be going to he, a very place where you can suffer. But he was on death row. Yeah. But he actually was on the dating game, so there's footage of the show because he was on that show. Yes. And he was, like, he ended up being super creepy to the girl. And so he ended up winning and won the date with the girl. Uh-huh. And then she, like, ended up telling the producers, like, this guy is super creepy and I don't want to go on a date with him. I mean, yes. And I don't, I, I watched the whole, I think there was, like, a series on Netflix. I don't think I watched it. But I can't, I mean, yeah. it was a while back. But, it, yeah, he was, he was obviously super creepy. So girls out there, don't be scared to use Uber, but because of this killing, like Uber put in even like more, um, uh, well, okay. Like the thing is, is now there's a picture of your driver. You can see the car very clearly. You can see the license plate. If the, if you're like drunk or intoxicated and you're going and you're like in Uber it, I mean, it tells you clear. It tells you the license plate and the make of the car. I well, guess. now they have. D- yeah, now they're doing that, and I don't know. There was a picture. Oh, maybe was there was like a model picture of the car, but it wasn't like the car. And I don't think there's a picture of the driver back then. So now there's a picture of oh. the driver, and now I mean, there's like a prompt, and it tells ago. you to double check, oh. double check your driver's name. Or ask your driver's name because it shouldn't match because the name comes up on there. So there's a lot of like things in place to where yeah. it would be really hard. Because what are the odds of you requested this Uber and then it was like this, well, black t- Tahoe. It was, a, um, it was a black Tahoe rolling up and then another black Tahoe rolls up and stops by yeah. you. And you just kind of assume, I get that, like you would just assume you'd get in. Yeah, yeah. And you're just ready to get home. And she, she did all the things right. She was being, she was drinking. She was being safe. She called an Uber instead of driving. And it just, it, it's I mean, sad it didn't work out. So <sighs> he's going to go to jail for murder and hopefully he'll get a whole lot of time. But um, he still acts like he's real innocent. Poked in the eyeball and in a lot of pain. Yes. Things. Yes. Suffer. Yes. 120 times. Like what? How do you stab somebody that many times? He was looking to stab somebody. That, like, he was just waiting, like a little spotter, just waiting. Ugh. Can you, um, t- okay, I know you Marco polling me this week about Simone Biles, and you wanted to talk about that. Okay, so. Tell I, me what happened. I mean, I know a little bit. Okay, so she was doing the team, the team. Uh, so, okay, this is going to air, like, at the end of August, so this is going to be old news. Okay. But she was doing the team competition, you know, USA Gymnastics. And then she, uh, ba- like, bowed out. She was like, hey, I can't do this anymore. Uh-huh. And it was like, there was no physical injury. It was just mental. So yeah. I was like, well, what do you think that's about? Like, but it was just ended up being, she she actually PTSD. backed out of the, the individual stuff today, too. Oh, wow. But it's something called the twisties. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I read a lot about, like, PTSD from, like, her abuse. And wasn't she part of the girls that got I don't think molested? she was. I don't think she, I don't think she was. I think she just was good, like, really close to those girls. I don't know. But what I heard today was that it was, it was basically like a little vertigo. Like, you get up in the air, and if you're a gymnast and you do these flips, and she does, like, all these insane things that. Uh-huh. She's above and beyond any other gymnast and she's getting up in the air, but then you typically can like see where you are in the air, but she was starting to lose herself in the air. Oh. So they call it twisties where you just kind of get a little like vertigo. You get and a little dizzy. And then it dizzy, unsafe and for then landing. She, that's why her landings were off like 
for for like her typical landings and her typical I guess things. And, and so, then what is it about them like saying? So I at first your at points first aren't. I don't know. You're not going to get. Yeah, you there can't was be your hundred percent, hundred percent because I don't know. There was not fair like, to everybody. Yes, I don't know all the details about that, but I heard about that, and there was I heard a very little tiny glimpse of all of that. Yeah, and I didn't really know what all that meant, so I'm not, I don't know. And was it just her? Was it for everybody? So did she back up, back out, thinking that sh- if she couldn't be her best self, then her their team wasn't going to be able to. Her- to be there, I think self. she backed out because she felt like it was going to be unsafe for her. Okay. Like, based on some of the things I heard today, was like she could have easily just like you could break your neck, you can yeah. break anything. I mean, you can just injure yourself completely, and you can end your whole career. And she was doing the responsible thing and backing up. But at first, you know, people are like, and I'm thinking people are horrible. Well, because you know, there's all these people saying, okay, she's. Like you're a team player, or and you're just gonna back out, or you just like you messed up once and you're just gonna stop, mm-hmm. and you know I don't I don't know anything about gymnastics, so I'm like, well, if, like, I don't know why would you just like back out all of a sudden, but I don't know anything about it. And then I heard today about these twisties, and that sounds pretty serious because yeah. I mean if you get lost in the air, I mean, I'm no gymnast, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I did do some air sports uh-huh. that was called a high jump. Yes, so. I didn't really have to like flip over things except for a bar and land on a mat, but I never knew where I was in the air. But I was like, okay, this there was a totally, mat. There was a mat to catch totally, me, yeah. and I had no chance of like breaking my face. Totally different. Okay, so speaking to athletes, I'm excited for oh, yeah, our so next month. That's mutt. why we bring this up. Yeah, I'm excited for next month's theme. So weird ending today, our killer women's month, and we're ending with such a good one. Such a good one. Caroline's going to tell you our great story. But next week, there's going to be Killer Bloody Happy Hour, Killer Athlete Edition. It is going to be crazy. So it's perfect timing. Um, Olympics was going on. She's coughing. Okay. Olympi- and the Olympics are going on. It's going to be the start of fall sports, football season. So perfect timing. And we're not going to pick on one sport at all. We're going to be equal opportunity podcasters and um, tell y'all. And there's five weeks in September. So you're going to hear five good stories that are killer athlete stories. So I'm excited. And... Should we scoop ourselves and tell them who they are? We can just say that there may be a local. Yeah, one. there is a local one. A local. So local for you one. basketball fans out there, Baylor basketball fans. Baylor basketball fans. Just get ready. For a get story. ready. <laughs> Sad story. I need to open the door. This is a new strain of COVID. Okay, I have a quick, can I tell them the story <coughs> about my true crime drama in my life oh, this week? Yes, yes. It's yes. true crime, so it's totally rel- relevant. Um, <laughs> you sound like me. I can't, it's so stuck in, like, stuck in my You need to do my noise. <laughs> I think it's this fly in here, this gnat, this gnat. Okay, so listen, my, I have... A th- brothers and one of them passed away like suddenly in 2019 may of 2019 so he but he had his car car was paid for kept his car because his son at the time was 16 and so we we're like we'll keep the son for isaiah that's my nephew that i live with now i mean that lives with me now since my brother died so isaiah wasn't ready to drive at first but we're we're getting the car we were getting the car like ready so that he can start driving it. So my mom called a body shop, a local body shop. I won't out their name. Oh, well, <laughs> you probably should. Not this one because it's not our repair shop. This one's this one's the innocent one. So called a body shop and say, hey, I'm sending this car. They've looked at it before. They know it's wrong, right? So the wrecker comes to pick it up. Yeah. And they said that they dropped 
dropped it off at this body shop that's down the street from my mom, auto repair shop. And so it, there's like weeks and the repair guy doesn't call my mom. He doesn't say it's ready. We don't even see it like parked outside. So she calls and the owner is like, it's not here. It never showed up. <laughs> so my mom's panicking because she's just like, I just lost Jeffrey's car. <laughs> What? Like, it's one of the last things that we have of my brother who passed away. And so she's upset, right? And I'm like, what? She's so blonde anyways. And I was like, Mom, what what, what happened? So. Yeah, what'd you do, Mom? What'd you Come do? Come on now. So police report was filed. They interviewed the wrecker. And the wrecker guy says, oh, yeah, I dropped it off right here in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. It was not there. Oh. Where was it? We don't know. Like, oh, there's been weeks. It weeks went by, and so we just thought, oh, somebody like they took it to Mexico or they took it for like a chop shop and like it's in pieces. Like what? We got a call two days ago, and the sheriff found it at a repair shop in Belmead, total <laughs> opposite <laughs> of where it should be. And it has just been sitting up there for weeks. But they don't know why. Like, the owner didn't say anything. They don't know why. So now they've towed it to their wrecking yard that they put their cars because they have to, like, make sure that it wasn't used to, like, put transport drugs. drugs. Dead bodies. Dead bodies. Like, they, it's, it's evidence right now. It's, like, evidence <laughs> right now. And so now it's scary. It's like, do we want my nephew to drive it? What if a crime was committed in it? Or was it just like a mistaken, like this wrecker was just an idiot and he took it to the wrong I don't know. It repair shop? Sus. It sounds real sketchy. Sounds a little sus. I feel like he was going to try <laughs> to sell it for parts or I don't know. I don't know. So there's my true crime story. So I had to pick up the keys yesterday from the police department. But we haven't seen the car. We have no idea what condition it's that in right now. That is just so weird. It is real weird. How does things like this happen in I my life? I don't know, but I feel like it happens in my life, too. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. It might have been Dirty Chad. It probably Playing was. Playing at Trace well, He's probably trying to sabotage you now <laughs> instead of me, because I don't know why, but oh, I guess it ain't nothing Chad. to do to me anymore. I don't know. Dang it, dang it. Yep. Okay. Dirty Chad up in here. I think it's time for you to dive into your story. I'm so excited. What? Who are you talking about? Okay. I am talking about Candy Montgomery. Candy Montgomery. We just had a candy man. I know. Wow. This is not his daughter. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all that I don't know this story. I didn't read about it on purpose, so I'm going to have genuine response. But sometimes when that happens, I victim blame not knowing <laughs> who the victim the, is. <laughs> who the victim is. So sorry if I do that. Okay, but listen, that's okay. And I'm going to try to get through it, but it's this probably will be a two-parter. And uh, I just want to tell you that I may have read a book. What? <laughs> How many pages was it? I don't know. I did a lot of skimming. But I had a little bit of a written a book. I got a lot of quotes from the book. Oh, the yay. book, the book, the book, I, the book. Caroline's first book in her life at age yeah. how old are you? 36. Yeah, she oh, <laughs> and she reading books. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this. I'm going right into it. Okay. The killer was triggered. Okay. They grabbed for the axe, aimed for the victim's head, and the victim at the same time was trying to get up from the blood-smeared floor, slipped, and made contact with the blade of the axe, and the sound that penetrated the room was like a coconut being popped open. Oh, That's wait. descriptive. Oh, wait. This is, this is literally descriptions. The killer kept going, blow after blow after blow. At the top of the victim's head, just continued to swing. Their brains were seeping out onto the ground, and the killer kept going until after 40 blows. Damn. And the victim was unrecognizable. So what does the killer wait, do the now? Mur- what's the murder weapon Oh, again? just wait. Oh. The axe. Oh, the axe, okay. So what does the killer do now? 
Um, Let me tell you. Yeah. It takes a brief shower in the victim's house. Oh, God. And this is in broad daylight, people. Takes a shower in their house and just stands there and lets the blood just go into the drain. I'm literally telling a story. Oh, my goodness. Do you feel like you're watching a movie? <laughs> yes. This I'm a, visualizing this it. This is a cocky crime. A brutal axe murder. Broad daylight. And guess what day it is? Oh. It's Friday the 13th. Oh, God. Come oh. <laughs> the victim was axed over 40 times, and later we found out that 40-plus of the blows were while the victim's heart was pumping. Oh, no. So that was my beginning. And let me tell you, this is why this crime, this is why this story is so exciting. Okay, that was from the book, Evidence of Love. Okay. By John Bloom and Jim Adkinson. So John Bloom is this journalist. He's accomplished. He's like nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. And he wrote it with Jim Adkinson. They spent years talking to the main players involved and they went into so much detail. So much detail. Yes. That's why books are so good. I know. And so it's like if you're watching the movie, you you need to go read the book instead before watching the movie. Always. And let me tell you, the movie, there are two movies that are coming out about this. Oh. There are two movies, two crime dramas, crime series. Okay. Okay. Like one is going to be on HBO Max. Okay. And it's going to have, okay, you know, Lily Rob Robbie from American Horror Story. Oh, my gosh. I keep getting a tickle in my throat. <laughs> yes. She's from American Crime Story. She ha- She's like the, she has like the long blonde, blonde hair. hair. Okay. Yeah. 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 So she's going to be in the movie alongside Elizabeth Olsen. I don't know who that actress yeah. is, but she's been in a lot of like, um, uh, Action movies. What's it called? I feel like I've seen something about this. Well, oh, she's been in The Avengers, this Elizabeth Olsen. And so that's going to be the HBO series. It's going to be called Love and Death. And guess the producer, Nicole Kidman. I mean, it's going to be a good, it's not, these aren't like, these aren't documentaries. These are going to be series, dramas. And then on Hulu, Elizabeth Moss from The Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. She's going to be playing the role of Candy Montgomery, which is who we're talking about. This is who the story is about in a limited Hulu series called Candy. Okay. So these, if you just Google Candy Montgomery, that's like the first two things that pop up. Because I, I guess they're they're both like starting production. I, I have no idea when they're coming out, but... Whenever I found that out, I was like, I've got to do this. Yay. Because we're about to watch a movie about it. Okay. Okay. So let's pick back up. So after the shower, so the the murderer goes and takes a shower. They didn't even take the time to clean up the crime scene. So they get in the car. They're like talking to themselves. They're like, act normal. Everything's going to be fine. As long as I keep it together. What's next? You got to follow your schedule. Um, that's the only way this thing is going to work. So what do you think is next on schedule for a killer like this? Um, happy hour. No, you're wrong. Maybe another victim. Mm. Oh. No, maybe they're a serial killer. I don't know. Maybe they're like some kind of family man. They're going to go back to their job. Okay. So the killer checks their watch, and they're like, perfect, I have just enough time to go to Target and pick up Father's Day cards for the kids, and I can go back to church, pick up the kids, and then i got to take the kids to swim lessons, and I should probably call my husband on the way, and okay, just one step at a time, just do one thing at a time, I can't lose control now, besides, I can just pray away the sin. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what happens when you read a book? You get all the details. So, this is, who is this person who's committed this horrible act? Is it Candy? It better be Candy. It's Women Killer Month. Well, I mean, obviously. But, you never know. You just, this this person just 
just casually gets to their car and, you know, it's a normal day. And then, you know, I don't know. We got a lot of players in this story. It's very bizarre. Okay. It's very interesting. So let me introduce you to Candy Montgomery. Okay. <laughs> her, her name is Candace Wheeler, but she goes by Candy. Okay. So growing up, Candy was easy to, easy to get along with. She's fun. She's outgoing. She's very personable. She's like always the life of the party. She wants to get to know people. Her parents would, uh, they would always tell her that you should never express your true feelings. Like just always, you know, just, just don't tell anybody what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Just, just do what you think you need to do or whatever. Like she, he, he basically was saying that the attitude was influenced by her father because he was uh, in the army and he just is like real strict and he's like just have a flawless exterior okay, and keep your feelings to yourself. And so her family never really stayed in the same place for more than three years. They just traveled from base to base. They bounced from France to West Germany to Virginia, Maryland, Texas. And typically that would feel make, you know, the kids feel kind of like they don't really have a home. But she really liked it. Oh. Like Candy was about she this like life. like starting all over. Yeah, she was like, I can make friends anywhere I go. Oh. I'm about this life. And I bet she did. She really did. So she could, and she was like, good with conversations she could like talk to strangers she didn't care she just was like basically made a friend anywhere she went she's kind of like a little you know like oh i can just make friends okay okay so (laughs) but her mom was not like this at all so this kind of led to a bunch of like disagreements and arguments and her mom was really rigid about what a young woman should do and how a young woman should act and you know, she just didn't like that she had this, like, big personality, and she just thought that she was just too much. So, the book mentions this next story, which is important. So, pay attention. Okay. So, Candy's mom was, like, embarrassed of, this is what they say, her ex- of Candy's expression of physical pain. So, an example. When Candy was four years old, there was a boy in her neighborhood, and she challenged this boy to a race. And so they, like, raced to the water pump, whatever. And they go to fill up this glass jar of water. So she loses. Candy loses the race. She takes the glass jar, and she, like, slams it down. She throws it, and she's throwing this tantrum, and she's real pissed. And the glass busts, and it breaks, and it, like, a piece of glass, like, cuts her on top of the nose. And so then she's, like, freaking out. She's throwing this tantrum. Uh. She's, like, bleeding profusely on her nose. And, you know, she's freaking out, and... It's so just mom, a little cut. Yeah, it's just a little cut. So her mom takes her to the emergency room because, you know, she's having this big breakdown. And she's got to be held down by the nurses and, like, all this crazy stuff. Like, it's just, it's stupid. And the ble- until the bleeding is stopped, you know, Candy's mother is so embarrassed. Okay. She's like, I cannot believe you're in the emergency room right now. You're screaming. We, I'm, I'm, you overreacted. She you overreacted. Got open. So this is what the mom does. Shh. That's important. Okay. She puts her finger to her lips and says, shh. Okay. Okay. That's real important. So, because the she's like, what are the people in the waiting room going to think? And so this reaction of her mother has scarred her. Like, she's like, okay, well, I guess this is why I should never show my emotions. Oh. Hmm. So... You know, she would always fear that her showing her true emotions, she would get scalded. And side note, this was a from psychologists. So apparently, whenever, uh, however, a parents react to their children's negative emotions, that psychologists have found that children whose mothers tell them to keep their feelings hidden to be less emotionally competent than their peers and can be and can struggle with poor social skills. Well, and like they even, you know, we tell boys quit crying like a girl. Yeah. We're actually supposed to let kids Cry. have their emotion. Yeah. Because they grow up and they don't want to show that emotion. Yep. So like after this water pump incident, Candy just learned to like push down any negative feelings and anything that contributed to like emotional issues as an adult as they grew she would just like repress her feelings and blah 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 she just was like no it's not happening 
So Candy learned to focus what was expected of her rather than how she felt. And she was constantly worried about what other people thought of her. But she eventually realized that her mother would not ever give her the like affirmation she needed or she craved uh -huh. and so she just needed to look for other areas of attention so she just you know would like talk to the boys in her class and you know she was really kind of she was rebellious she was loud but she wasn't like a bad kid she was just that was just her personality she was outgoing and she yeah, that's good. Those yeah. are good qualities. Yeah, but her parents were like mute. her parents were super strict. So you have this person who has this outgoing personality. They want to talk to people, they want to meet people, and then you got these super strict parents in the world. So she wanted to like go out. She wanted to date. She wanted to do all the things, and her parents were like, no, no, no. Well, eventually, she's gonna do it anyway. So she ended up like running away for like a day with one of her friends, like one whole day. Yeah, to go, like, to a roller... I mean, it was, like, super innocent. Like, go roller skating or something. I did that one time, and I lost 30 minutes, and I came back home. <laughs> I snuck out of my window. Where did you go? I went to a friend's house, but it was, like, early in the morning. And everybody was still asleep, so I just walked around, and then I snuck back in my window and got my bag. I was like, they're going to be so mad. I wrote a letter and everything. They're going to be so mad at me. You wrote them so a letter? So sad, yeah, but they didn't even get a chance to get the letter because I came right back. I know. That's oh when I God, went to Corpus Christi. That's so great. I love that story. <laughs> so finally, um, Candy, you know, she finally she's grown up. She's, let's say, she's 20 years old. She, it's 1970, and she moves out of her parents' house. She's living in El Paso. And Candy's on the hunt for a man. Candy's from Texas. Oh my gosh, yes, this you is didn't a Texas that. <gasps> This is a Texas crime. That should have been first. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> this is like in Wiley McKinney. Oh like, uh, like yes. Okay, okay. This is like right up the street. I have friends in that area. They probably now can Do you have the address? I probably can find it. Okay. So she is like eyes on the prize. She wants a man. She wants to get married. She wants to start a family. She wants to have like eight kids. And she's like ready. She wants to like live on a farm and do all the things. She's trying to be the most. What? Okay. Yeah. Because like back in the day, this is like 1970. Okay. Like, I mean, when I was 20, I'm like, oh, I'm going to the bars and I'm jumping over a bar. I'm running track <laughs> and I'm doing you're gonna hurdle the bar yeah i'm running track <laughs> and i'm doing high jump and i'm going to uh, literally i'm like going to track field i'm going to bar going to track field going to bar that's all i'm doing i ain't trying to get married and have kids mm -mm. no so she's starts working at a furniture store and she's so she's living on her own she's working at a furniture store and this woman who works with her is like obsessed with candy meeting her son and she's like He's so smart. You're going to love him. He's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Please, 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 please she's meet my real son. Thirsty. He's just such a catch. He's so great. He's so great. And she's like, oh, lady, oh, fine. I'll meet your son. You're real thirsty. Real, real thirsty. thirsty. Her son must be a nut job. Well, her son is Pat Montgomery. Okay, Pat. Pat Montgomery is a very big player in the story. Okay. Let me tell you about Pat. Candy eventually agrees. She's like, oh, there's no harm in meeting somebody and going on a date with them, getting maybe a free meal. I don't know. So she meets with him. Pat Montgomery, he's very important. He's a shy engineer. So he's really smart, like the mom said. Okay. Okay. So Is he cute. Well, I don't even know what he looks like. Okay. But Pat did not like that his mom was always because he was her his, his mom was always doing this. He didn't like it. Oh. Always setting him up on blind dates. Always like these random people because they were never his type and he was too busy. He was working and he was also he getting his PhD. So he's going to school. And so he was just, he was one of the smartest electrical engineers at the company he worked for. Okay. Okay. And you know, Pat's a catch. Pat's a catch, but typically wasn't her type because he's boring. Okay. I mean, so they went on the first date and it was the worst, dullest, most boring date. 
she's ever been on. Before the date even ended, she just wanted to call her friends and be like, oh, it's so boring. <laughs> just like that. Okay. I'm being an actress right now. Okay. <laughs> she wanted to be like, I'm bored ass. Uh, I'm so boring. I'm bored AF. I just want to go home. But you never know. He, She's like, the, so she's not home yet. She's just thinking this in her head. Okay. She's like, but he has, he does have a great career path and he does have potential. And I do want to have a nice house and a big family and mm-hmm. live on a farm and have animals. So now she's starting to, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this so might now need she's to be like, a pimp decision. I mean, all those things might be a little expensive, but he's just so boring. But maybe it's okay. Maybe. Hmm. So he drops her off. And he asks for a second date. Okay. So and he had no idea this was the no, shittiest he don't date know. ever. No, he don't have a clue because he's boring. <laughs> and she's like, what the hell? Did you not? Were you not just on the date? We were just on. It was terrible. It was so boring. And she's like, okay, let's go on a let's second just, date. Let's do it. How, what's your salary? So then they go on the second date. And their second date's a drive-in movie. Okay. Oh, hey. And he tries to grope her. Ooh. Oh. So she's like, okay, daddy. <laughs> but no. And then he drives her home and then he asks her on a third date and she agrees. And but then Pat tries to call instead of the third date and she goes, um, she didn't answer. Oh, okay. No, she didn't answer. She and Pat's like, Oh, she must have had a family emergency. Like, there's obviously something happened because she wouldn't have left me on red. No. No, bro. She yes. ain't love me on red. Yes. I no. love how you're making the 70s right now. <laughs> I'm going to do how you do, and you make the story your story. Your way, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I interpreted it. I'm like, bitch, you ain't leave me on red. Left. No. Yeah. So Pat was like, I'm going to just go ahead and send her a dozen roses and a funny card. <laughs> this funny card. It said, I hope you get the sand out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I mean, know. I would have went on a third date with them. I don't know what that <laughs> even means, but I had to tell you because I thought it was so funny. So Candy thinks this gesture is just so sweet. Oh. And she's just like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll call him and we'll go on the third date. So she calls him they go on the third date. And around, about around the same time as their third date, Pat's uncle dies, and he was super close to his uncle. Okay. Okay, this is just random. All of a sudden, his uncle dies, so he's coming in town for a funeral, and he was super close to his uncle, like I said, because his uncle was who got him set on his career path to being this engineer. And so he starts, like, telling all of his feelings and getting, like, real emotional with with Candy, and that night after the date, Candy goes home, and she calls her friends. You know, the, after the first date, she wanted to call her friends and tell her how it was terrible, boring. Yeah. And after this date, she calls her friends and she says, guess what? I found the person that I'm going to marry. Not that I love. <laughs> that I'm going to marry. He's so wonderful. And so great. What's the first question you ask? Do you love him? Who is he? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's. Pete or <laughs> Peter? <laughs> Candy. I don't even know his name. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Peter. I'm just like laughing. He just, he's an engineer. That's what matters. Yeah. I, just, Candy. I don't know his name. I, I mean, <laughs> he just makes money. He, he just does the things. I mean, it's fine. So she can remember his name, but she was going to marry him no matter what. At least she knows what she wants. Yeah. I mean, you know what? So... Then they start, like, writing, like, love letters back and forth. Through, I guess because, like, you can't text. You know, nope. You know, you can't text. You can't, can't email. Oh, my God. You can't. You literally, you write, literally letters write letters. And put them in the mail. So and they this, get them a week later. This story is, there's so many letters involved in all parties. Okay. So there's, like, I guess you need to check That's the mailbox. Okay. So then Candy was, like. Yeah, they're writing all these love letters, and then so this is this is one of the letters that was in the book that Candy wrote. It says, "Tonight I was telling my mama about how wonderful she wrote this to Pat. 
tonight I was telling my mama how wonderful you are. And she told me on several occasions that I was going crazy, that I was crazy in love. And then Pat writes back in his deep, serious voice, my darling candy. Mm-hmm. I've got my take tape deck playing mood music that I recorded. Oh it would God. be a great seduction tape. You want to be seduced? It's nice to sit and listen and think of you. That is the modern day <laughs> DTF. <laughs> Are you DTF? So Candy's like, oh, yeah, she thinks she's got him where she wants him. She could feel it deep down inside. She's like, he's going to propose to me soon. He's going to propose. And how long have they known each other? This is date three, isn't it? Two weeks. Okay. <laughs> she's loud. Wow, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is, they're doing the most. And then he tells her, he's like, the next time I'm coming in, I have the surprise of your lifetime. He just is like, oh, and she's like. I'm about to get proposed to. I'm about to get proposed to. And he really probably just wants to get his wee-wee wet. He comes over and he gives her this gift. I mean, there may be like, he's making it sound like there should be like confetti and there should be like band playing and there should be like all this drama. Mm -hmm. And she, he gives her this gift. She opens it. And she's like, the life, history, and magic of the dog (laughs) it was a book about the comprehensive study of dogs throughout art literature and history including discussions on physiology plus by psychology and specialized services of mankind he gets to do so she refers to this as the damn book he gets her book she was wanting to get proposed to and he got a damn book (laughs) for her poor boy he just didn't know what to do he didn't know, and he thought Maybe he was a little bit on the spectrum. He thought he was dating me and give him do- <laughs> books about dogs. <laughs> she didn't even like dogs. She didn't care about dogs. She oh. wanted to get married and have a family and do all the things. So, you know, eventually, he did eventually propose to her. Okay, and you know, he's like, "I'm looking, I'm looking forward to being the father of your of your babies and teaching them how like." They had to do the right things and blah, blah, blah. And they get married and they're not making a lot of money, you know, because he's still trying to get his PhD oh. and, you know, he's going to be an engineer, but he's still working on this and she's like trying to be this housewife. And so they end up, you know, having a kid <laughs> because what else do you do? So they have their first kid, Jenny, and they were so happy. They were so happy. They had Jenny. Okay. Uh, they're, they're happy. And and then, you know, they had their second child, Ian. So they were just like, oh, yeah, we got two kids now. Great. So then Candy's like, mm, maybe I don't want to have eight kids. I just want to have two. And I'm going to get my tubes tied. So she does. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, no, let me just calm down. There you go, Candy. <laughs> so then good. things start looking up and they're happy. And then Pat gets hired on to Texas Instruments. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So. How you know about Texas Instruments? From uh, the calculators. The calculators. <laughs> yes. The giant ass calculators. Eighty three. We had to pay for for college yes. algebra. So listen to this. Apparently, they had a secret government consult. They had secret government consulting contracts, and he was one of the very few scientists that were working at the top of this. And they're one of the largest semiconductor companies. In the world to this day, and they develop chips and processors for electronics, not just calculators. Okay. So how about all that? And they're still alive these today. So they're just going out there charging chairman fifty dollars for these calculators. It probably cost them three dollars. That you could like a hundred dollars. I know. And like, could you not get it on the app? No. Do people still have to buy those calculators? No, you have to. Every kid in the school. Has There's got to be some kind of like secret, like, because how how are there no other places that make calculators like that? <laughs> there may be, just I'm not just in Texas. Saying. So he gets hired on. He gets paid. Candy's living her best life. She's staying at home. She hated being still. She's always doing something. She's just like always doing stuff. So they built their house, dream house near Dallas, Texas. Uh-oh. They're not in Dallas. They're not in the big city. They're like in the Outside. country. Yeah. Okay. Um, like McKinney, Wiley area. So 
they're they're trying to get more of a family oriented feel kind of a place. So then they start searching for a church number nearby, not because they're super religious, but because they wanted something for the kids. Yeah. Okay. So then this is going to bring us. So we have so far we've met Candy and Pat Montgomery. Okay. All right. Now let's meet Betty and Alan Gore. Ooh. Okay. So the Gore couple. So these two couples, the Montgomery, the Montgomerys, which is Candy and Pat. And the Gores, Alan and Betty, they're very similar in many ways. They're the same age. They're married young. They had daughters the same age, which you'll find out more about later. Um, So Betty was a farmer's baby. She was like, she's from Kansas. She's pretty. She wasn't beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is all, um, all how the book describes everything. Okay. She's so proud of her book. She has said book I'm like so proud at of least 72 times. I have to say, I'm going to say it even more. So get <laughs> ready, Betches. She won, Betty won most popular baby in oh. her town of Kansas of 414 residents. Oh my goodness. Most popular baby. How is the baby popular? I don't know, but she was the most popular. So, you know, whatever. She was... You know, she just, she grew up, she was like a stern, quiet type of a person. She wasn't very interested in, like, making friends. She, like, drove a tractor. She, oh, you know, I don't play the clarinet, whatever. She tried to be feminine, and according to the book. She sound real butchy. <laughs> she was, quote, a nice girl, wholesome, non-complaining, responsible, and intelligent. She's the kind of girl that every mother wants her son to marry. But she's boring as fuck. And now a word from our sponsors. All right. If you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jet. You can do that if you go into blendjet.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one Mm, with some chia seed. Was it chunky or anything? It was very smooth. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. So this is a great alternative. I love it. Um, it is battery powered, so all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks, and the battery never runs down. Oh my gosh, I love battery powered things. Go to Blendjets and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing. Cure hydration. If you are obsessed with your hydration like I am, this may be something good for you. This is something that is so easy. Forget about the Gatorade. That just dehydrates you even more. And if you don't like the taste of coconut water, try Cure Hydration. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z-E-N dot A-I slash B-H-H 20. This is vegan. It's no added sugars. It's just a little packet you could put in your water. Or if you're really smart during happy hour, you could put it into your Tito's. It is just as effective as an IV drip. And it's... If you do not like the taste of water, it's not as boring as water, not as sugary as the sports drink. And if you're an athlete, it'll give you the best performance. Or if you just get brain frog or headaches because you do not stay hydrated. Brain frog? Brain fog. (laughs) The solution is... Cure hydration. So go to that link, enter the code. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z E N dot A I slash B H H 20. Cure hydration. Did you know you could be putting oil and chemicals in your coffee? I love coffee creamer, but I don't think I've ever turned the bottle around to actually see what's inside. When I did, I found out many of my favorite creamers contain ingredients I would never intentionally add to my coffee cup, like canola oil, dipotassium phosphate, ew, and artificial flavors. 
Laird Superfood all started when big wave surfer Laird Hamilton needed morning fuel that could allow him to spend the entire day chasing the ultimate wave. He couldn't find anything in the market that met his ingredient standards, so made himself the ultimate plant-based creamer. Laird Superfood started and launched its first product, Original Superfood Creamer, in 2015. Laird Superfoods contain no artificial flavors, colors, or additives, and no sugars from highly refined corn syrup. All Laird products are sustainably sourced and thoroughly tested to ensure that you're incorporating the cleanest, finest fuel in to your routine. All Laird products are also made of all natural whole food ingredients and they are crafted from the highest quality all natural real food ingredients. Are you ready to feel more energized, focused, and supported? Go to LairdSuperfood.com and add nourishing plant-based foods to fuel you from sunrise to sunset. Use our promo code BOO at checkout to save 15% off your purchase today. I'm your puzzle loving pal and I'm going to tell you about my latest obsession, Wongo Puzzles. These things are the real deal, folks. They're high quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I've been there. (laughs) I might still be there. But I got one of these actually for Christmas. I loved it. I did it, and I was so proud of myself. And they have all these cool designs, and you need to go to wongopuzzles.com and use our discount, BHH. You get 10% off, and I really want to know if you'll order one of these puzzles, How? what you think about it, because it's so fun, and I need to order, like, five. A-F. Boring A-F. So, to us, but we're not ranchers yeah i mean yeah then that's i would be bored if i was you know one of the girls so (laughs) her main goal in life was to become a teacher okay so she this is how she lives she like gets assigned a paper and she like finishes the assignment like the day she gets assigned i mean who does that i don't finish the assignment till like it's overdue (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So yep, she's yep. like turning shit in early and she's like going to college. I don't know. She just, she was just the, you know, always a star student. But then she gets to college and she's used to being like a perfectionist and everything, but she really sucks at math. Okay. Which is fine. So, so she had to go get a calculator. So she had to go get a calculator from TI department <laughs> from Patrick McGorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she was like so mad she couldn't get the hang of math. And so then she has this like math teaching assistant. Well, the teaching assistant is Alan Gore. And wait, oh, Al Gore? Like the no, no, no. president? <laughs> I don't know, baby. <laughs> but this guy's name's Alan Gore. Okay. And that's her teaching assistant in college. Okay. And so she goes up to him and she's like, oh, I need, I need a tutoring session. Like, I need to learn how to do this whatever math and he's like oh i'll give you a tutoring session (laughs) whatever so they meet in the library and they literally like give a tutoring session it's no nothing there's nothing exciting no no because guess what betty's boring (laughs) and she's not uh she does not live on the edge i guess so Well, well that's good way to go betty i mean your name is Betty. I mean, so, what do you expect? I hope I'm not so, victim blaming. I mean, I probably am. No, you're definitely not. Okay. Oh, maybe you are. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, Betty goes by the book. She follows the rules. She's, I don't know that life. But anyway, Alan, then we have Alan. He was also raised on a farm. And Betty and Alan, they, neither of them ever had, like, any serious prior relationships. So, they're... Alan's tutoring Betty, blah, blah, blah. And then once she graduated and wasn't a student anymore, Alan confessed he was in love with her. But he did that because she was in love with him. Because basically Betty worshipped Alan. Okay. She, I mean, he taught her math. (laughs) Would you not worship him if he taught you math? And you couldn't get mad? Okay. So, basically, Betty becomes, like, really infatuated with Alan while he's tutoring her. And then they end up falling in love. And then now we have two couples. Okay. We have the Montgomery's. We Mm, have the Gores. Okay. okay? So, Alan 
is very, uh, he falls in love with Betty because she's very simple. She's not complicated. She's passive. And they never argued. They never got into fights. You know, they always just got along. And, I mean, they probably just went to the library all the time. So what? you can't yell in the library, so you can't get in fights. <laughs> you can't talk loud in the library, the can boring. you? <laughs> they are my idols. They're, I want to be just like I them. wish I could be that boring. The most drama they had in their relationship was Alan was not very attractive. And so Betty's family was, like, real pissed that Betty was an ugly boy gonna marry Alan or gonna like falling in love with Alan because they're like Betty you might have ugly kids like what wh- they just wanted something better for her like Betty was the most popular baby <laughs> now, what about most popular was Alan the most popular baby I don't know maybe you need to go find most popular male baby <laughs> what are you saying so like they just were like he's he has a belly. He has a receding hairline. Poor And he has like Al. <coughs> real puffy cheeks. Oh man. So what's he hiding in those cheeks, Betty? What's he hiding in those cheeks? Marshmallows? Why are they so big? <laughs> but Betty was like, no, I'm gonna marry this man. This is my man, I'm marrying him. I don't care what you say. I don't I've never been in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> So she was an avenant and you know, they were they were actually in a very stable relationship. Okay. Like Betty was super planner. If she had a vacation planned for what is this month? July? Mm-hmm. It was planned like six months ago. Okay. I mean, they knew where they were going. They knew how long they were walking. They knew where they were gonna go each day, day sit by on day. the bench and what time they're gonna go sit on that bench and what they're gonna eat on that bench. And if they're going to feed ducks on that bench, and they knew all the things. Okay. She was that prepared. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying. Unlike me. Unlike me. Also. So, the only problem in their relationship was that Betty was so terrified of Alan ever going out of town for work. She what? was just so terrified. I'm just saying. Was he going to find a f- side piece? She didn't know. Or was somebody going to kill would, her on the farm? She would cry. She just started becoming like obsessive. So she just would cry. Like when he went out of town, she would call his boss and she would be like, please let him come home. Let him come home. You keep sending him away. Oh my gosh. You can't just give him a job where he keeps going out of town, please. Like she's crazy. And then Alan's like, Betty, we're adults. You can't be doing that. <laughs> Grown up. You can't ups. be doing all this stuff. This is so embarrassing. <sighs> what the hell, Betty? Betty. You can just hear him. Can you hear him? I hear you. Okay. <laughs> I'm super animated. I feel like I'm telling the story. In this <laughs> my microphone. So the next time he went out of town, it got so bad that Betty had an affair with some random person (sighs) she had a one night stand and it was all because he was out of town and she's mad at him for going to work yes she i she let when he came back she confessed and she was like i don't know why i did that i was so confused i was so scared of being alone i promise it will never happen again that's like true abandonment (laughs) issues like she has issues and i don't get all she Clearly has like former issues from like her parents or something because I mean I what know. happened after she was nominated most popular baby? What did <laughs> they do to her? This is real weird. Clearly. So then Alan's getting upset. He's like, Okay. All right, Betty. But he eventually got over it and she never cheated on him again. And <laughs> by the way, in the book <laughs> I love saying that. <laughs> um, Alan says he didn't know if this was a way for Betty to like kind of control him. Like if you go to town, then I'm going to cheat on you. Or if you go do that, like this is the consequence you're going to have. or This is the punishment you're going to have. Or if she was genuinely scared to be alone. Okay. He didn't know. So he eventually became resentful of her. And that's kind of what happened there. 
and they eventually had a daughter. <laughs> Let me just fast forward. <laughs> okay. So that just happens. They, I skipped a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> so she cheats, he gets over it, and then they finally have a child. Okay. So this is Alyssa. That's their child. And they have a kid, Alyssa. Betty becomes a teacher. Okay, she was originally wanting to be a teacher. And so now she finally gets a job as a teacher. And things weren't going so well for Betty as a teacher. What'd she do? Well, she was super strict. So remember, Betty's real boring, and she's, like, by the book, and she's just, like, I feel like she obviously had to have some issues growing up. Because um, teachers, parents, and students all thought she was way too harsh. She demanded perfection, and she taught se- second graders. <laughs> <laughs> she probably like beat them, and like she, the teachers that hit your hands with the yes, rulers. Yes. <laughs> and she would like everybody would be like, "Betty, it's not that serious, sir." <laughs> Zero years old. Like, and I was just like, "Go listen to Taylor Swift because you need to calm down." <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? The song? Yeah. Okay. okay. That was my that was not from the book. That was from me. And I also heard on one of the or one of the things I read, like her students like uh vandalized her house, but it was like this second graders. Well probably the parents like <laughs> taken. They're like, Yeah, let's go vandalize her house. I hate that teacher. And so yeah. I don't know yeah. how that really worked with their second graders. But apparently Betty was suffering from a little bit of postpartum. You know, she was becoming. Except for she did before she had the baby. Yeah, so, so she just basically, this is, this is what the book said, so I'm going to tell you that. And she's becoming very anxious. She's in and out of the doctor's office once or twice a week. She didn't have any friends. She was separating herself from everyone. I don't think she ever had any friends. Because who wants to be friends with her? She didn't seem like a fun person. And then she writes Alan, her husband, a letter. Oh. Because what else do you do Yeah, back then? And this is what her letter says. Dear Alan, sometimes I have doubts about myself as a person. I wonder if I'm really accomplishing anything. But if you express your pride in me, then I feel reassured that I'm really important. I just need to be reassured and told this often, just as I need to see and feel tangible evidence of your love. Oh, so she needs words of affirmation. Love Betty. And what's the other one? Gifts of love. She needs words of affirmation and gift. What's the other one? And physical touch. Physical touch. Well, because it says just as I need to see and feel tangible evidence of your love. So see and feel. Did she write that book? All the love languages? Maybe. (laughs) She might have. Go look it up and see if that was her. So. Uh, She's too needy. These, let me just tell you that I am so legit. Couples <laughs> meet at church. We got the Gores. We got the Montgomerys. Now they meet. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> that was me in the club <laughs> last week. Okay, so finally the two couples end up meeting. Oh, I already told you where they meet. Where do they meet? Church. At church. Didn't get it. Oh, it was a bug. Lucas Church. Lucas Church. So they were both Methodists, like both couples, but they didn't go to Methodist Church. They went to this church called Lucas Church because there was a female leader named Jackie who everybody loved. She was she was religious without being like judgmental. She was caring. She was like super understanding. She was she wouldn't tell people they're going to hell. You know, she was like, you know, just I don't know. Genuine. She, genuine. She made everybody feel good about being religious, you know. And, you know, there was no, like, s- most churches have, like, board of directors and stuff like that and yeah. leaders and groups. But, no, this church, it was just Jackie. Okay. So, basically, it was more like a club. But she, was she, she wasn't the pre she was she was the pastor. Oh, she was the pastor. She was a leader. She was the pastor. But typically, like they have like a board, like a group of people who aren't all the pastor, but they're they all together make the decisions for the church. Yeah, but they didn't have that at this church. I don't know. So this is a cult. So it's basically a cult, <laughs> and she is uh, 
she is, what did I say? Oh, yeah, it's more like a social club. Okay. That's what they say. And maybe that's why they chose this church. Because Candy was super social. Did they talk about, like, is it a Christian? Supposed to be a Christian church? It just is called, it just is called Lucas Church. So look it up. <laughs> yeah. Lucas Church. Lucas Church. Okay. Yeah, check it out. So, um, it wasn't your stereotypical church, basically. Betty, Betty tried to be involved with the housewives and be a part of the church and, like, the club. But, you know, they were, like... They always thought she was, she, you know, she wasn't very personable. She was not, she was just type A. And, you know, she probably on the spectrum, which is fine, but that's probably how she, I don't know. They just thought she was too socially awkward and that she didn't fit in. She was too rigid. This and, is still Betty, right? Yes. Yeah, this okay. is what the other housewives in the church okay. club are saying. She's just too rigid that's probably why she didn't fit in. It's not like they kicked her out. She just didn't fit in. She didn't want to. She didn't really want to be in the group. And Candy thought Betty was also just so stern and rude. And in some ways, Betty reminded Candy of her mother. Ooh. You know, shh, that part. Remember that part? Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. So. Fast forward to Candy is bored. Okay, so the Montgomerys and the Gores have met, uh -huh. and now we're going back to a little bit of Candy's Candy story. Okay. So around the time that, uh, you know, they start going to church, Candy's a housewife. She's not working. Pat's going to work. You know, he's doing everything. So she's like... Going to church, dropping the kids off at school, making lunches, baking cookies, making lasagna, you know, doing the things. Mm -hmm. And she's just doing the most. She's doing the most. Oh. This freaking gnat. <sighs> I'm about to be doing the most with this gnat up in here. <laughs> and then Pat's over here. He's like, he's going to work. He's coming home from work. He's going for a jog, you know, and they're not having sex. <sighs> They are not having sex. Pat and Candy aren't. April, they are not having sex. Pat and Candy? No. Pat and Candy, yes. They are not yeah. having sex. Okay. So she's just not satisfied. She is not satisfied. And she's bored. Did she go find Al? I just, let me tell you. <laughs> so she's like, she does what any normal person does. And she starts talking to her friends. And she's like, I need to get laid. I'm thinking of having an affair. <laughs> she even talks to the pastor about this what? which is jackie so you know jackie's cool you know, oh yeah part of the housewives group okay she's like i mean pat is just not exciting he's not he's not cutting it he's boring and he just treats me like i'm an employee of the house he's like not exciting not having it it's boring she knew what she married and when like growing up like she read like I don't think romance novel, maybe romance novels because she always like pictured this like oh, all yeah. these things in those romance novels because you know they go into depth. So she, that's that's kind of what she's always pictured, and she thinks it's how life should be. Yeah, she's basically like basically like nowadays that would be watching like Fifty Shades of Grey, and she's <laughs> like, oh hell, and then she gets this person who's just like dead in the bed, and she's like, oh no, no way, no, I can't be doing that. So she goes to the, these church women they were like candy that is unacceptable that is so scandalous don't do it candy why would you this is not a conversation for us something like this this is this is not a place for that uh -huh. this is church uh -huh. this is church on god okay on god and they're like go talk go talk to your book club about that or something <laughs> go talk about that a book, book club. go talk about that at book club like come on lady go talk about that somewhere else so, you know, she's like, mm, whatever. So the the one person who wasn't there to hear this conversation was Betty Gore. Okay. Because she didn't really, she wasn't active in the church. Okay. And she also wasn't easy to get along with. She wasn't one of the gals. She wasn't super popular. And so in the relationships, these two relationships, Candy is at the Montgomery's. You have Candy, who's active and, like, doing things, and Pat, who's, like, 
he's the shy one. And then you have Betty and Alan. Betty's the shy one. And Alan's the outgoing one in relation, relationship. Okay. Okay. Got it. So then the church ends up starting this, like, volleyball league. Okay. So Candy's like, oh, yeah. Maybe I'll go play volleyball. And the volleyball will be so distracting. Like but I won't want to have an affair. That I won't. I'll be paying attention to the volleyballs. And I won't want any extramarital balls. <laughs> Anybody else's balls. So yeah, let's play volleyball. All the balls, 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 balls. So she does it, and she starts going to practices. And you know, she was like, "This is great. This is this is this is nice." And then there's. There's one day that she's on the volleyball court and I guess balls are flying at her face and she like runs into this person, like her and this other person collide. Well, it's, it's, it's Alan. It's Alan who she collides with on the volleyball court. Uh And she like smashes into, I'm, I'm picturing it. I'm picturing her face smashing into his chest, sweaty and then like fall to the floor, whatever. We'll see how it plays out in the movie. Okay. But There's this moment, and she's like, oh, my gosh. Smack. (laughs) Alan. Alan Gore. Oh, my gosh. You're so masculine. You're so sweaty. You smell so good. Oh, my gosh. Are you hiding this wild side in your cheeks and your belly? Alan (laughs) Gore. I just smashed your face in this volleyball game. I'm in love. So she's like, hmm, maybe. Maybe this Alan guy's. Maybe I need to have an affair with this Alan guy. Maybe this that's who him. I need to have an affair with. That's who I need to have. An affair. Am I screaming at the mic? Yes. Come on. <laughs> so a couple weeks go by, and she sees Alan at volleyball practice, and she's like, "I for sure want to have sex with him." Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure. And finally, one day after practice, she couldn't help herself, and so there, Alan's in his car, and she like knocks on Alan's window, and she's like, "Hey." I need to come in. I have to ask you a question. She's like, I've been thinking about you a lot. It's been really, it's really been bothering me. And I don't know whether I want to do this or not. And he's like, what are you talking about? (laughs) And she's like, I'm really attracted to you and I'm tired of thinking about it. So I wanted to tell you. And then, and then she's like, like leaves the car. She didn't even say anything. She didn't even say like, that's all she said. I'm really attracted to you. I want to tell you. And she like runs out of the car. This is after the same practice that they ran into each other, right? Yes. He's, he's no, just... this is a couple a couple weeks go by oh. after the smack. Okay. And a couple weeks go by. She And then like after another practice or something, she like goes and stops in. And she's like been thinking about it ever since she ran into his oh, sweaty body. It's just the first guy she saw. Yes. Yes. And so then after she's I'm so tired of thinking about it and blah, blah, blah. And then she leaves. And he's, he's thinking, he's like, what, what did, you didn't even tell me anything. Like, what are you talking about? He's like freaking out. He's like, I don't know what you're saying. And then she leaves the car. She runs and she's like, she gone, she gone. And then Alan's like, okay, I don't know what happened. We're in a parking lot or this is where Jesus happened. Like this is on God, like what's <laughs> happening. And you know, then he's thinking about, it and he's like, well, why is she thinking about me? Does she like really like me? Does she like want to like, like what? Like, what? Is, what? I don't even know what just happened. So then they have another practice. And then she goes up to Alan again. And she was like, Alan. And she just says, would you be interested in having an affair? <laughs> <laughs> and Alan's like, oh, oh goodness. Oh, DTF. Oh, oh, I don't think that's such a good idea, Candy. I don't think that's such a good idea. And she's like, okay. I just had to get it out there. And then. Right before she leaves, he kisses her. Oh, gosh. And so everybody's so, so confused. Like, what's going on in this crazy town? <laughs> everybody's confused. Everybody's kissing everybody. You're running into people volleyball and balls in the face and, like, sweaty and all these things. So, I mean, I'm exhausted <laughs> telling the story. Could you imagine listening to it? It's already been, like, four hours. I told you it's going to be a two-parter whenever you're ready. So then he, like, no, we can't because you've. You're not. I know. I'm not even, I know. I know. I know. Like... I know. Just wait. So eventually, you know, they're like they didn't talk for weeks, and then eventually, like he he ends up like calling her house one day, and he's like, 
hey, like, do you want to go to lunch one day? And I guess Pat was gone. I don't know. I guess she answered. And she's like, yeah. So they end up going to lunch one day. And they start talk, talking like hypothetically, like what if what would happen if they were to have an affair? <laughs> <laughs> like, so they basically like start planning their affair. Okay. Okay. And they come up with a list of rules. This is so freaking boring. Like, what if you're gonna have an affair, just do it. Why are you gonna no, like April, they need a list? No. <laughs> just rule number get it one. Done. Rule number one. If either <laughs> of them wants affair. to have an affair, I mean <laughs> this fucking fly. Okay. If either of them wants to end the affair, it's ended. Okay. Okay. That's rule number one. If anybody wants to end it, then we end it. If anybody, if either of them gets too emotional, rule number two, affair ended. Rule number three, if they start taking too many risks, affair ended. <laughs> rule number four, all expenses will be split equally. Food, gas, hotel room. Rule number five, they will only meet on weekdays when their spouses are at work. <laughs> Rule number six, Candy will be in charge of making lunches. So they will save time and money. <laughs> so I can't. So I don't can't. even want to be a part of this affair. <laughs> so so they would meet on like Tuesdays and Thursdays, once every two weeks. And the, this was because Candy was only free on the days when her little boy wasn't at preschool and blah, blah, blah. And she took him on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So she and packed blah, her blah, sandwiches blah, blah, blah. and they went to the hotel. So the astronauts are getting ready to launch, and the affair is set to start on December 12th. Okay. <laughs> they, made at the Coma, they made it at the Coma Hotel. And Alan, okay, let me say that again. So affair starts, and they meet at the Como Motel. Como. Como. And I mean, Candy's just expecting it. She's expecting fireworks. She's expecting the best sex of her life. She's expecting romance novel sex. She wants to get flipped. She wants to get turned. She wants to get <laughs> done in the butt. I don't know what she wants. And, and it's, it lasts it's five minutes. Terrible. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's worse than Pat, but it is pretty bad. But she's like, I can guide him. I can tell him what to do. I can, I can, but, but he has the most beautiful penis ever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. So meanwhile, Betty's <clears throat> pregnant. <laughs> oh gosh, Betty. Betty's pregnant with her second child. I hope y'all can keep up with this because I'm telling you the most. And so Betty's pregnant with her second child. This is Alan's wife. All right. So Candy's daughter. So, so Candy has Jenny. They have, they have a daughter. And then Betty and Alan have a daughter, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. And they are this, they're like the same age and they're best friends. Okay. You like my. Yeah. Motion? So after the first few months of the affair, Candy tries to break it off. She's like, I'm so tired of making lunches. It's not even worth it because you're not even that good in bed, Alan. <laughs> and <laughs> Alan's like, I'm not accepting it. And they're like, well, that's part of the rules. And he's not accepting the rules. And But in a weird way, she kind of felt like she was falling in love with Alan. Oh, God. I, I can't, know. I can't. I can't. Can somebody course, kill somebody? <laughs> and then, of course, they wrote letters to each other. <laughs> oh, my gosh. These so, people are pitiful. blah, blah, blah. The affair ends up ending. And, um, so she don't have to make any more potted meat sandwiches. Yeah, for because Alan. it ended up that like Candy tried to end it twice. She didn't. She wasn't successful. And then like Alan was like, "Oh well, we just had this baby, and so now we have to end it." And she's like, "I already tried to end it twice. Why can't we end it whenever I wanted to end it?" And he's like, "Well, now I'm having a baby." Blah blah. So then Alan and Betty go to marriage counseling. They go on this like marriage retreat. Okay. Well, this is called like marriage encounter and Temptation Island. <laughs> I don't think they're no. tempted, but they go to this thing and they it's like the the only rule of this of this retreat is you can't talk to each other. So you just have to write letters to each other. I would love that. 
I would be like, good. I don't talk. I don't even talk about anything. <laughs> okay. So that's whenever Alan and uh, Alan and Betty like they like their marriage really comes together at this marriage retreat. Uh-huh. Like they're writing letters and they're like figuring out why they like don't like each other. And she, he's like, I thought you hated me. And she's like, No, I just have issues with my brain and blah blah blah. Well, then afterward, you know, they married and they like ended up having sex and it was like a good thing. There's a lot of sex situations in the story, by the way. Yeah, not good ones, though. Yeah. So then Candy's like, well, shit, I want to go to Marriage Encounter with Pat. So then she goes to Marriage Encounter with Pat. And she's like, oh, well, let's see if this works. So they write letters to each other and blah, blah, blah. So then they're like, well, it didn't really work so well for us. <laughs> like, mm, it didn't really work that well as well as I expected. It didn't work as well as it did with Betty and uh, Alan. So then she's like, maybe I just need a hobby. Maybe I just need a hobby. Maybe I don't need to just have an affair. I just need to have a hobby. Volleyball. She needed another one besides volleyball. Yeah. And so she's like, maybe I'll go like write a book or something. Maybe I'll go paint. And so she goes on some like book writing retreat, whatever. Well, then Alan's like, I mean, Pat is feeling like real lonely. He's like, Candy's gone. She's on this like book writing retreat. She has this new hobby. I'm real lonely. So I want to go read some of the letters that she wrote me at marriage camp. Okay. He didn't read them at marriage camp? No, he, he wanted to reread them. Oh, okay. He was like, he was just needing to feel, because he was lonely. Well, he goes and looks, I guess, in like the letter drawer and guess whose letter he finds. He doesn't find letters from Candy. He finds letters from Alan. To Candy. To Candy. Because everybody writing letters. Mm, too much evidence. Too much. They were obviously not very sneaky. So... He's like, Pat's like seeing this letter from Alan. It's like, uh, it's like, I love you. Like the sex was great, blah, 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 like whatever. And he's like freaking out. Pat's like, oh my gosh. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, do I need to call? Do I need to call Alan and like get mad at him? Do I call Betty and say your husband is doing this? He's like, no. Like Betty's had, just had a baby and blah, blah. Do I need to call Candy and be like, Ah, oh, Candy, do I need to go over and like go to the book writing retreat? No. You know what he decides to do? Oh. <laughs> he goes to a flower shop and buys her flowers. He buys her flowers. He writes her a letter. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he buys her a dozen roses and. He writes her a letter that says he understands and that it was really his fault and that he pushed her away. And so Candy gets home and they talk about it and she cries and she feels horrible and she'll never do it again. And so they decide that they need to go on vacation and they just need to get away. And then next thing you know, it's Friday the 13th. Uh-oh. So this is actually not where we stop because I still have a little bit and then Unless you want to stop. No. <laughs> there, It's not. Okay. <laughs> it, like, there's nothing to. I know. Okay. Co- okay. You know what okay. I mean? Yep. Like, there's no. I, I have the I have the place. I got it's. Not, I got another place. But how much do you more? Why don't you just, end, like, not just end it? I no. mean, not end it, but, like, tell the story to the yeah. end. But how will. much more is left? I, I'm going to get to the stopping point because there's a cliffhanger. Oh, there is a cliffhanger. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we get to Friday the 13th. So this is the last day of VBS. Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School. Friday the 13th, Candy had her two kids in the back seat along with Alyssa Gore because her, Ginny Uh and Alyssa are best friends, and she has her son, Ian. So they have all the kids. She's... um, They... Alyssa and Ginny had just had a sleepover, so... The Gore kid was just sleeping over at the Montgomery's house. And it had been a couple of months since the affair ended. And so they're kind of getting back to normal. Okay. And the, you know, for the two couples. And Kenny thought it would be fine if, you know, the their daughter spent the night. Because Betty had no idea about the affair. It was just the three of them. It was just, it was just Alan, Pat, and Candy who knew about the affair. And so Ginny was, like, dying to go over there and blah, blah, blah. And so... Uh, the problem was that 
it, this is gonna gonna be a lot for Candy in her day. I mean, this day is she has to go and she has to take the kids and she has to get Alyssa and just to go bring go pick her up front and go pick up her swimsuit and go take her go to Betty's house and she has to get Alyssa and take her to swim practice and she has to go do this and she has to go do this and she has to go do this. Well, she just. She has to just get get over all of the stuff, and she just was like, it's fine. I can do it all. She likes doing all the things. So she goes and drops the kids off at VBS, okay? okay? And she tells the church ladies, like, this is my plan. Like, oh, I'll be back in time for the puppet show. Like, don't worry about it, whatever. So she leaves the church, and she gets in her car. She's driving to Betty's house. So she's going to Betty's house because – Alyssa's going to spend the night another night. She gets in her car. She's driving to Betty's house. And Candy gets there. And she was like, oh, hey, I just came over. Hey, Betty, I just came over to get Alyssa's swimsuit. And she's like, oh, by the way, where's the baby? And she's like, Betty's like, oh, she's in bed and whatever. She's like, I'm going to play with her, blah, blah, blah. And Betty's like, um, Candy, if you could remember whenever you take Alyssa to her swim lessons, like give her a peppermint because she <laughs> hates putting her face underwater. And so when you give her peppermint, that will be like her reward. Her ins- oh, cause everybody loves peppermint. Yeah. Yeah. So then, and then Betty's like, she starts, she's like, Oh, hang on. Let me go finally get peppermints. Blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, she's like, Oh, oh my God, I got to find the peppermints. Like, all these things like I'm packing to go on vacation and Alan's gone and he's out of town and there's just so many things going on. And she like, just seems real stressed to candy and just as like candy's like get, about to get the stuff from Betty and, and she's like, Oh, I gotta go. Like I need to, let me get the things because I gotta go. And then Betty just is sitting in a chair and just is like staring at candy with like this blank stare. And she's like, candy, did you have an affair with Alan? Oh, yes. She said no. She no. said no. Candy said no. Betty says, yes, you did. I know you did. And then Candy said, yes, I did. But it was a long time ago and it didn't mean anything. And it was like a week ago. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Betty leaves the room. This is where, get ready for it. Betty leaves the room. She walks into the, into the utility room, and Candy's, like, freaking out. She's like, how did she know? How did she know? Did Alan tell her? And Betty comes back into the room, and she's holding a three-foot-long axe. What? She is holding an axe. And she looks at Candy, and she tells her, you can't have Alan. You can <gasps> never see him again. And Candy's like, I don't want him. Like, I'm over him. But, like... Oh, but she's the farm girl, so that's why she grabbed an axe. Because I wouldn't have thought to grab a damn well. Axe. Like later, they they say that there's like this newspaper that was open on the table because it's Friday the Thirteenth, and there's this new movie coming out, like axe murder movie. Uh, and she was like, "We're like, oh, we think that she got the idea of the, this." Is what the defense attorney ends up saying. He's okay. like, "We think she got the idea of the axe because she was reading the paper, and that's mm-hmm. there was this movie coming out, and the paper was open to this new movie." Blah, blah, blah. So Candy's like, the the affair is over. I don't want him. And Betty, like, sets the axe down. And she's like, okay, let's go get Alyssa's clothes. Because Candy, you know, is going to go get. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine about okay, argument she's over. Like, I'm fine. That's fine. I'm done. We need more people like that. I know. That would be me. I'd be like, okay, fine. <laughs> and then I would <laughs> get chopped my head off. And so they go get the clothes for the kid and whatever. Candy's like looking for keys. She's like, oh my God, I'm ready to leave. She's ready to get out of there. And she notices like Betty's face, like all of a sudden, like turns like to rage. Oh. She raging. She, Candy goes to touch Betty's arm and she says, Oh, Betty, I'm so sorry. Like, oh. and Betty gets so mad. She just like that was it because it, it was, was real fake. patronizing, yeah. like Pat- yeah, patron patronize patronizing the tone. Patreon, Patreon. Oh yeah, the tone triggers Betty, and then okay, 
I still don't know who the murder is going to be. Betty lunges toward Candy, pushing her into the utility room. She picks up the axe and she, she screams, you can't have him. I'm going to have a baby. I guess she's pregnant or she thought she was pregnant. She's like, you can't have him this time. Candy's like, I don't want him. And Betty's like, what? What do you mean you don't want him? You just like shoot him up and spit him out. You don't want him anymore. Like he's not good enough for you anymore. So then she's like uh, kind of because you know she says cray. she gets mental issues. She's she's been like depression, all these things. So she's like Betty raises the axe, and Candy's like screaming and she's ducking and like the axe falls out of Betty's hands oh, <laughs> onto Betty. the floor. And anyways, this is the point where like Candy sees blood on because like she raises the axe, it falls out. The like blunt part of the axe hits Candy on the toe. Okay. So it causes her to bleed. So if you refer back to, I don't even know if I yeah. remember. Whenever, from her childhood, there was that story where she got her hit in the glass, hit in the nose with a piece of glass from when she was racing that little, that kid. So it kind of brought back all those memories. And she is like, oh. Oh, because she freaked out when she saw the blood. Yes. Okay. She freaked yeah. out when she saw the blood, and she was like, uh, "No, I no, I, I'm not. I can't handle this." And she grabs the axe, and she ends up like pushing Betty away with the axe, like holds it to her chest, and and Betty's like crawling around, and then Candy just raises the axe and just hits her right in the back of the head. Oh. So Candy hits Betty in the back of the head, and it she there's like we she heard a dull pop as it the pressure like inside Betty's skull releases and blood begins to pour down her neck. What the hell? Oh, just wait. Candy drops she drops the axe and she's like trying to get out of there, but like I Betty's still alive. Like she's still going. Oh. So she Rose like blocks just away. Switched. She like blocks Candy from getting out. Oh, and Betty. Candy's like, let me go. Like, I want to get out of here. And she was saying how Betty was in some kind of a trance. And she was like clearly like in shock of yeah. whatever blood loss. And obviously you got an axe chopped in your head. And it's like fight or flight, and she's fighting. And Betty whispers, I can't. Like she can't. Yeah. Uh, she just can't. She can't. So she tried to grab the. Then Betty tries to grab the axe and like get Candy with it, but she can't because she's too weak. And then Candy's like running for the door, but the door won't open because I guess it's like slippery from blood all over her hands. And Betty's still coming after. Her, and then like this is what the book says. She comes over. Betty comes up to Candy and just does her finger over her mouth. Oh. Sh- like her mama which did is her. exactly what her mama did and so candy just like she started raging she was like i need to destroy betty i feel like she I just didn't really like her anyways because she wasn't very friendly she was why do you have that much rage to take out on somebody you wronged it, I, right unless she already had something against her or unless you just already cray which i think it's so she just cray. She is. So Betty, so she got the, so Candy got the ax and she started hitting Betty over and over and over and over in the head and the arms. And she like used all her strength to do it. And she ended up hitting Betty like 12 times just right then. And then she finished off with hitting her in the face over and over until she just was like, I, I'm done. I can't hit anymore. <gasps> I'm I'm out of it. Wait, but what's she hitting her with still? The axe. The axe. I feel like Betty's like bionic. Like how can At this you get point, hit that many times with an axe? She, so the first time she be... got hit, she was still like, probably like she was still going. And then she goes, shh, and the candy start chopping at her. Why would, uh, that's a lie. Candy That's was, what the book said, so I they'd know. be lying. I'm this, okay, Candy's this, lying. Yeah, because th- this is all from Candy's testimony. Yes. This is what, it, this is all what she says. She's trying to, like, 
act like there was a trigger that took her back to yes, childhood. Yes, trauma. But there was that was not no damn trauma. Oh, I know. If I, that's the case, my saw. kid is gonna be real crazy. I know because I've like, done more than some shh. Oh, just wait. It you're just it's gonna be. So Betty's face was unrecognizable. Oh, Betty. I mean, she chopped her. She chopped it up. Chopped oh, it. Betty. It was, uh, quote, a shapeless mass of blood and bone. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So then Candy goes into Betty's bathroom. She gets in the shower. She keeps her clothes on. She just rinses blood off her her arms and stuff. And she's like, never mind. I got a bigger mess to deal with in the kitchen. Or I got to go clean it up. So she tries to clean it up. And she's, like, smearing blood all over the place. And she's like, you know what? I ain't got time for this. I got to go to church, pick up my kids. So she just bounced. She gone. (laughs) So she goes home. She uh, realized that her watch stopped in the shower. So she lost track of time, blah, blah, blah. So she gets home. She then tries to, like, think up her alibi. Like, what is she going to say? Where was she? And so she's going to say that she stopped to talk to Betty for a few minutes. She grabbed Alyssa's clothes. and she drove to Target. And her watch stopped. And then she was, like, just driving around the Target parking lot, which is why she was late. So if anything happened to Betty, it must have been... Some crazy person who broke in and killed her just a few minutes after she left. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, so she didn't know anything about it. Yep. Some crazy person. All that Candy's testimony. In the meantime, did I tell you where Alan was during all of this? Because he was out of town. Remind me which one's Alan. (coughs) Alan is Betty's husband. Husband. Okay. So Alan was out of town. He was on a business trip. So he's been calling Betty. He's like, where's Betty calling her? She didn't answer. He called several times. He ended up calling the neighbors and is like, can you go check on them? They went and checked on her. They were like, everything's fine. She's not answering. And then they ended up going back over there a few times. Okay. So it ends up, there's three neighbors that go over there. They're like, the car's there. The lights are on. But they kind of started getting a funny feeling after a little bit. So they ended up getting in the house because the front door was unlocked. So, they didn't try to actually go in the front door at the beginning. They, after a few times, they, I guess they just looked at the house, rang the doorbell, didn't try the front door. Yeah. So they go in the front door. They hear the baby crying because they have a baby, like a one-year-old baby. <gasps> oh, shit. So this all, all happened. Wait, with she the had baby. a one-year-old and she's pregnant again? Well, she thought she's pregnant because she missed a period. Oh, okay. So I think okay. she wasn't actually pregnant. Or she just thought she was. So she okay. just gets real emotional. And so she... The, the baby's crying, and they find the baby in the crib, and she's face is all red, and her hair is all tangly, and she's her voice is, like, super hoarse, and she has poop all, like, in her diaper and stuff. I mean, she's, no. So they get the baby. They bring, get the baby out. I mean, baby. It, it was just, a, it was just, I mean, it was several hours, but it wasn't, like, longer than a day or anything. So, I mean, that's good. Oh, so the baby's fine, according to you. I mean, the baby's fine. They they, <laughs> they, they say, you know, they they brought the baby out to their she wives. She's needing You know, she's fine. She's in diaper change. And, you know, she's a little horse. I've been horse, so we, it gets, goes away. It's fine. So, they go in the house, and they're like, oh, my gosh, she's dead. They found her in the utility room, and they're like, at first they thought she was shot, or they thought she shot herself. Because her face was, like, Ooh, so yeah. messed up. So they thought she shot herself, but ended up, obviously, she didn't shoot herself. And they were like, oh, the, once the police got there, they realized there's the axe. So she even left this the is murder what, weapon? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, like, right oh, just off to the side in the utility room. So Betty's arm is almost severed off. Her teeth were exposed. She has, like, this half-looking grin. Her left eye was open. The entire right side of her face was smashed in, completely unrecognizable. Hey, in case you don't know, this is an explicit (laughs) podcast. There was blood, brain matter, and tissue. I want to make sure you can visualize it. Listener discretion is Is advised. advised. And the axe was real close to her body. Okay, so that is all that. Then we're going to go to the trial. This is, I'm going to introduce you to this guy, Don Crowder. Okay. Okay. So everybody in town is talking about the murder because it's a small town. So at church, there's this guy and he's like, well, my legal perspective is that this is a killer and that he's a drifter. Every time. (laughs) This is a drifter and like, 
uh, he's probably several states away by now. And they're like, how do you know? And he's like, what? I'm a personal injury divorce attorney. What is uh-uh. a personal injury and your first <laughs> mind is always it's somebody she knew, like they know. Well, this guy was a personal injury divorce I mean, attorney. Yeah, but Clearly. remember I put in my application for FBI not too long ago? I didn't know you actually did. <laughs> so I think I'm more qualified than him. You probably are because he is trying to be like, I know everything. He's like, that's how, that's how this is happening. That's how. So the police end up questioning Candy. It was not as a suspect, just because they knew she was at Betty's house. And her alibi, you know, all, her story doesn't seem strange to the cops. It just seems like, okay, whatever. They're like, there's no way this church going housewife woman, this, cause I, no I, way. When was the, like, this is 1980. So was it like a thing for women? Like, was women killers like, they they just didn't think they're like there's no way yeah, there's yeah. no way I can see that. So I mean the police had like all the jurisdictions involved. They had Texas Rangers coming out. I mean they couldn't handle it, so they needed all the help. They yeah, could get. yeah. And they were like double checking with Alan, making sure he didn't have anything to do with it. They Poor were asking Alan. him if he had ever had an affair. He said no. Oh, and then he, he finally. Like- the, he ended up calling the cops and he was like, okay, I did have an affair. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. And he was like, oh, but they didn't know. They just said that. Oh, okay. They just said that to trick him so he wouldn't call and tell Candy. So remember when Candy's husband found the letter, right? Because yeah. yeah. Candy's yeah. husband found yeah. out. Yeah. Did he just go tell Betty? Or did no. Betty have ESP? She had ESPN. In- <laughs> <laughs> she had that sports ESPN. channel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did they... So no, so I don't get it. she just knew. So she is probably dirt. So dirt a, leg, anyways. Apparently, like there was somewhere it said like, oh, they there was a letter that she found, but they never said that, and they never it wasn't like factual. Yeah. So Kenny is questioned. She leaves the police station right after she leaves. She's like, I need to get a lawyer. So she goes right to this Don Don Crowder. This personal injury divorce attorney guy because that's the only person she knows he's never <laughs> just done like a criminal come on now so she goes and gets him as her lawyer so he's like an ambulance chaser you know meanwhile he's, he's like he's, yeah go ahead and he's looking for like somebody passing by on like a train and yeah. like passing by and yes it's random killing yes like yes. no so he's 100 percent sure he's like candy did not do this He's like, I mean, she's a housewife. There's no way. And he tells her, he's like, there's three people you never lie to. Your pastor, your doctor, and your lawyer. (laughs) And he's like, so don't lie to me. Did you do it? And she's like, no. And he was like, Candy, was it Alan? Who did it? What happened? What do you know? And she was like, okay, I did it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, she just told yeah, All she was like, yes, People I just did. have to ask her twice on anything. Betty asked yes. her once. She said no, second time, confess. So then Lawyer. he's like, Oh hell. He's like, Well, don't tell your husband. We ain't tell him Pat, because he's gonna go straight to the cop. So that's that. Okay. So that's Don Crowder. And then we're going back to the trial. So we had the testimony, okay, which was the actual murder. So the media is all over the place. Like this is a small town, so it's like Candy's a home wrecker. You know, she's this and she's this. So Don, the personal injury attorney, divorce attorney, <laughs> whatever he is, it's now he's it's never like, tried a c- criminal case. I mean, <laughs> and he was confident that Candy would win. I don't know why. He's just confident. But this is what happened. He starts off the trial, and he says, "On Friday, June thirteenth, Candy Montgomery killed Betty Gore." This is what he said. <laughs> she did it with an axe, and she did so in self-defense. Oh, uh, you know what? Mm-hmm. She literally, she did. According to her testimony. And there's so, no. So here's the thing. Dawn also got Alan, Betty's husband, to testify. And he was talking about Betty's mood swings and her erratic behavior and... They also linked those small details about how the newspaper was open about the axe murder movie that was coming out. And like, they were saying that's the reason why she grabbed the axe and 
Dawn was arguing how Betty was trying to scare Candy because Candy refused to apologize to Betty about the affair. And then the argument was like, but really 40 plus blow Because did I say that? 40 plus Over, blows? That's overkill. Yeah. Yes. That's personal. That's, you wanted to kill yes. her. So they were saying like 40 blows. Like how is that self-defense? And apparently a psychiatrist got up there and she was saying how. So Candy ended up getting hypnotized at some point. I don't know. I guess they used hypnotized. Hypnotization. <laughs> Hypnotization. Oh, here's a new word. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and so Candy like revealed like her, her, her childhood traumas when she was being hypnotized and blah, blah, blah. But the psychiatrist. Her trauma is her mama didn't let her cry. I know. It's so dumb. So the psychiatrist was like, Candy was not in control of her own body when she hit Betty over and over and it was just pent up emotion. Well, no shit. So. The defense rests. So the defense is like, no, no defense. The prosecution is so boring. So Don has like all this emotion when he's like telling the story and he's just like, this is what happened in this. And he just had all this emotion. But then they were apparently like the other part, like the prosecution was so boring and they just weren't like buying it, I guess. I guess they just were buying the defense because he was so animated and just so into it so after three hours so we doubted some don browder crowder crowder oh it gets just wait okay so after three hours the verdict is in Mm. did i do you already know no what do you think um uh, candy's real pretty right i mean she's apparently She's just more fun than Betty, I think. Okay. I don't know if she's So like I think beautiful. she would could if she's pretty, she probably could appeal to the jury and it's Texas. Just a system to go anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and so I bet she got not guilty. She not guilty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unanimous not guilty of murder or a first degree murder or a voluntary manslaughter. Mm, I'm not going to say what I really want to say. Court, you should say it. Mm -mm. Why? If Candy was a black girl and killed this (laughs) white woman, listen, Candy would still be in prison. She would still be. She probably executed by now. So she's a free woman. And then... Eight days after the verdict, the Montgomerys moved to Georgia. They later divorced. Oh, this is it. This is the end. Oh, my God. This is the end. They ended up, they got divorced. So her husband, like, just stayed with her? Oh, no. Okay. Wait, who's? Candy's? Candy's. No, they divorced. Oh, okay. Well, no, he he supported her throughout the trial. Throughout the trial. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He supported her. He was there for her. And, and then... Yeah, they moved together and then eventually they divorced. Okay. And then Pat, Pat, what, Pat, her husband. Yeah. He continued to be like an engineer. And then uh, Candy became certified as a family counselor and she changed her name back to her maiden name, which was Candace Wheeler. Bitch. She's a counselor, like with her daughter. Alan Gore, Betty's husband. Yeah. He, who also ran for president a while ago. No, <laughs> the same person. Oh, okay. He got he remarried between his wife's death and Candy's trial. He got remarried. What? Oh my gosh! Uh, this is not acceptable. <laughs> and he left Texas. He lost custody of his kids, but apparently Why? they they have lost con. They have uh. Lost custody or lost contact? He lost custody of his kids. When they're still little. They were little. Yeah. Why? I don't know. He was just. Because he was, he just, I guess he didn't, because he probably got remarried and left Texas. Oh my gosh. I think they were raised by hit by Betty's parents. Okay. But apparently they've, they've come into contact again through Facebook. <laughs> That's what it's Facebook said. is bringing back some family. And then listen to this. Don Crowder. The personal injury, defense, whatever. He committed suicide in 1999. What? I don't know. That's just what it said. And also, Betty's, the house where she got murdered, is still there. So we could go drive by. The address is 410 Dogwood Drive. 
in Wiley. What? Tell me what town it is again. I don't know. I got like three different town names, so because it, it's all like a little area. Well, there, yeah. There's Wiley. There's Lucas. Saxe, there's Lucas, Texas. There's a bunch of okay. Things. So, so just yeah. Google it if you want to go and visit. Yeah, 410 Dogwood Drive. If you want to go visit it, take pictures and send, send us the us. pictures. Or if you live close to there, if there is not one person who lives close to there who listens to podcasts, we're doing something wrong. Then we're clearly, uh, it's unacceptable. Then I'm quitting. Then this is it. Last then this episode. is the last episode. And all that hard work on social media posts that I put in. <laughs> Down the it's drain. It's for nothing. So basically everybody in the community is like, they don't believe it. And they're like, the self-defense thing is bullshit. And she got away with murder. Which what? she did get away with murder. She did. What do you think? Do you think it was self Do you believe Candy's story or did you think she went over there to murder her? I don't think she went over there to murder her, but like. You don't just like all of a sudden get so mad that you're going to like chop somebody 40 times with an axe. Like, no. you could leave. Yeah. And you don't got any trauma. Yeah. Like, I mean, shh, really? Catherine Knight. That's the last yes, thing. Yes, we can understand, like, yeah. why they, she did what she did. You weren't, like, getting, yeah, molested and abused and beat as a kid. You were fine. Yeah. You were fine. They need to, like, just have a tracking device on her because something else is going to happen. Either murders well, will happen around her. She's been, I mean... I can't wait for the movies to come out, though, or the shows. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned to the movie because I just want to see how they do that whole self-defense story. And, you know, usually these movies, they take one side. So are they going to take Candy's story and make a movie out of that? Or are they going to take, like, what, like, the other side, that like, she's a cold-blooded killer? Yep. Love it, love it, love it. So there's Candy. Yep, there's Candy, so go um, drive by our house, take a picture, send it to us, and um, how about, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Can I, <coughs> oh, sorry, oh, no. I smoked 17 cigarettes. Oh, Not really. no. <laughs> <coughs> Not really. It just sounds like it. So, can I end with the animal fact? Remember oh, my yes. kids? Yes, yes, yes. I won't yes, do yes. them all the time. Okay, so if you didn't hear the last one, former student with autism, loves animals, and um, he used to tell us like a trillion animal facts a day. And then we got him down to one. So he would just hold up a sign in the hallway and it would have like an animal fact. And oh he'd tell everybody. Gosh. He even like walked across the stage at his baccalaureate and stopped the principal and told the principal an animal fact about giraffes. So he just loves it. So now that he's graduated, he puts it on like his Facebook and he has like a text messaging system i feel like he's probably got like hit him up he <laughs> hit him up is that even still a thing i don't know that's what we used to use <laughs> what did you see that, like back in the day and then i started charging you i'm like no nope. yeah so um and he sends an animal fact yeah because you read the other that first one about ostriches with two toes yes, yes. okay and so. i was i actually chopped my toes off okay i run Do you so run fast faster? now oh, yes i have base i was okay. actually in the olympics okay so <clears throat> Alligators, there's 14 species of crocodile. Sorry. Oh. This Australian saltwater crocodile is called a salty, and it is the largest growing crocodile, and it can be up to 17 feet long. Oh, shit. I'm done with crocodiles. Done. Hell no. Uh -uh. So there is your animal fact of the day. And sometimes Can you tell picture. me the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Um, do you want me to ask my former students? Please, because I, I think will. that is a good question. It's probably like one has more spikes on their back or something. You know what's so weird is like they kind of they like they're like dinosaur ish looking. <laughs> they and it's are. like can you imagine if we lived in the world in a world when in the time where there were actual dinosaurs? Like, what if there's, like, a brontosaurus or T-Rex, like, just walking down the street? I mean. Your mind. Did you did you chew something up today? I did not have any gummies <laughs> today. But your I always think, like, there. what if there was a, like, what are those big flying pterodactyls? A pterodactyl? Yeah. I don't I'm know just what I saying, would do. What if... You know, I've been, I've driven a car where I had a bird fly into my windshield. What if you had a fucking pterodactyl fly into your windshield? <laughs> that would be that would be a little traumatic. 
I know. But All right, y'all. So this is the this is last the last one story of the women killers. Yes. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. We love telling y'all crazy stories. Um, and so next week you're going to hear the first story of our killer athlete killer edition athletes. And get ready. So. Like I said, we're not going to pick on one sport. We we're are equal mm, opportunity. Equal opportunity. <laughs> we're like basically the Olympics of trial murder. Of yes. trial murder? Of trial. Mur- <laughs> of murder. I don't know. True Podcast. crime murder. True crime murder. True crime murder Olympics. So we got a football player. We got a basketball player. We got an wrestler. Olympian. And we got a wrestler. And then what we do you mean an Olympian? Up. We got an Olympian. Oh. Yeah. Mine? Yeah. That's oh. yours. Oh. <laughs> basketball player. And a basketball player. So we got it all. So tune in next week. We're going to switch it up a little bit. And um, tell us how much you love or hate us. Because all comments count. Yeah. That's how we crawl up the um, popularity board. Yeah. And Apple Podcasts. So if you have an iPhone, go to Apple Podcasts. And you rate send us. us a story. I know y'all have stories. Yes. It doesn't even matter what it is. I just want to read a story. Or you're just going to keep hearing our weirdo stories. Yeah. So we're not very interesting. Mm -mm, Not at all. So uh, always stay aware, stay alive, and always be D T S. Bye, y'all. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.